Here we are in a beautiful field in Wisconsin on a spring day, adjacent to the Ice Age Trail with a box of strings. These strings are a way of understanding the vast history of our planet, what is known as deep time. So deep time, the Earth is 4.54 billion years old, and trying to understand that depth, that expanse of time, is challenging. It's a challenge to comprehend. But one way of trying to, to understand this is to scale time to space. As an example, my pinky nail is about a centimeter wide. We could scale that to represent a million years. And if we did so, the length of a string that represents the history of our planet, 4.54 billion years, would be 45.4 meters long. So this box contains many strings that have been contributed by our collaborators today. What we've accumulated here are hundreds of strings of time from, from you all dispersed across the planet right now. Let's pull up another one here. This one is from Janesville, Wisconsin. Onalaska, Wisconsin, from Mountain View, California, New York, New York, Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, and South Range, Wisconsin, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. So we have a, uh, a string of time, and this one is coming from China. This is coming from um, Shanghai, in fact. So let's open it up and see what we find. So here we go. The first string of time to unpack here. Look at this, a very delicate string with important moments in the history of our planet and important moments in the history of a life. So May 1903, dad's side comes to the US from Germany. 1909, my great grandparents immigrate. My grandparents were born in 1944. Birth of my parents, 1968, 1970. Birth, 2002. Agriculture is invented 12,000 years ago. Here we have the first evidence of trade between humans. So 9,000 years ago, ancient Greece is first inhabited. Um, Jesus Christ is born. Benjamin Franklin discovers electricity, 1752. Alfred Wegener proposed the, the continental drift hypothesis, 1912. 93 years ago, first scheduled TV broadcast in Schenectady, New York, the beginning of happiness. People's Republic of China, founded in 1949. The Boston Celtics first NBA championship, 1957. 57 years ago, President Johnson signed the Civil, Civil Rights Act. 1969, the Apollo 11 landed. 40 years ago, the 80s decades began, best time for music. Gay marriage is legalized in 2015. One year ago, I get into UW-Madison and then the start of Geoscience 100. And three years from now in 2024, graduate from UW. And in six years from now in 2027, graduate school. And who knows what's after that? That's actually, that's, that's really wonderful. Who knows what's after that? This is a Tadada collaboration. So you may be wondering, what is Tadada? I'm going to show you. You are Shinoma.
300 of them, but they come into Geoscience 100. I wonder if they that way about science. I want to use science to reveal the whole human. And I think in revealing those connections, revealing the connections to humanity that bind us all, seeing ourselves and others, and others and ourselves. So that's what I want to do. Um, when these moments happen, you know it, these moments where the veil is moving, and you see the world in a new way, and you're grateful for it. One of those nights was at Crescendo on Monroe Street, a beautiful evening. I was listening to Infinity, and I knew that there was a possibility of something new that had never been done. And immediately I realized and knew it just reinforced this idea that this would be a fantastic exploration of humanity through science and music. Artists became ta-da scientists. And we've engaged many artists. Buzz is involved in this. Alex is filming that is um, tonight as part of this. Ethan Parrish is filming. Um, Bruce Crown is one of their artists. So we're engaging the humanities in science through the community. So I'm going to show you now some video. So our filmmakers work on here. So there's some, some video shit pop up here. So we commissioned this piece, Nebula Nebula, but we also with the videographers, come up with directorial sort of ideas and things. So this is showing the Doppler effect. We put, we put Mark in a uh, speed car. Um, we filled the car with water to show us the sound of the particles. White, our artist got out, put him on Lake Mendota for owls filming with drones and all. Uh, this was the most comfy situation here. Ben got to the And we got to study waves here. And of course, this all comes back into the classroom. And the response has been enormous. We've gone from having 42% of the students coming in saying that they identify as science, but they see this part of themselves, to 94%. So this is the beginning of something new, and it's been such a joy to engage in this wonderful collaboration. This experiment, this playfulness, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. You just saw what's going on upstairs with Dr. Meyer's lecture. Do you have any idea of what might be going on up there? No, um, I think I heard music. Science feels a certain way to me. It is creative, it is emotional. I'm engaged in this because it connects to my humanity, because it's wondrous. So how do you do that? How do you create opportunities for them to experience that wonder? That's what it's all about. It's basically I want to give the students the experience that I get to have. I want them to have that emotional experience. I'm Katie. I'm a freshman. I'm Keisha. I'm a junior here. My name is Ajahn Sarama. I'm a sophomore and I'm a first wave scholar. So how do you do that? How do you create uh, opportunities for them to experience that wonder? I like wasn't that excited, to be honest. But then I got there, and it was so different the way that uh, Professor Myers taught. One of the highlights of my research career was publishing a paper in a journal called Nature. My work was then used to argue against climate change. And so at that point, I realized that it wasn't enough to be producing the science and pushing the limits in that way that I also needed to be pushing the limits in how we communicate science and how we create and cultivate engaged public. So we've created this new initiative. Uh, this was in my spouse, Gigi Cohen, uh, who is a photojournalist and social documentary photographer called Tadada Scientific Laboratory. It's an experimental laboratory where we bring in artists of all sorts and we uh, create all sorts of new experiences, I call them connection events, to engage individuals in science, to basically awaken the inner scientist. I'm not a science person really. I've always struggled with like the science and math and stuff. Um, but this science course was like totally different. It like brought in things that I was actually interested in. 
Thank you, Bruce. So could you think of any analogies between the creation of this print and the creation of geology, geological strata? It was super cool. I've never had that before. I really liked the second one with waves uh, because I feel like when you could actually hear the sound waves, it actually made sense to me. I think we seek to speak the language of awe through our art, which for me makes science and art inextricably connected. I feel like it really like made a meaningful connection to a lot of students. And the idea of this project is to inspire scientific literacy and to cultivate emotional connections to science. And we do this in the science classroom. So we re-envision these classrooms of 300, 400 students that are not science majors, that are taking it as a requirement. We view this as an opportunity to really try to cultivate uh, a populace where sound logic and sound reason and also empathy for each other sort of govern decision making. And the idea is to sort of re-envision these as an opportunity. When I think about the lake here, right, this beautiful place, we love this place. We have such a connection. Look at the ducks there. They're having a fantastic time. We celebrate the warmth that comes with spring. It's great. It feels fantastic. But we can't deny that this particular lake is one that is projected to be very sensitive to warming and climate change that's occurring. And uh, if we keep going as we do, the number of winters without ice on the lake are going to increase. And that changes a lot of things. Wherever you find yourself, I want you to know that we're gonna continue this exciting exploration of our past and our future and the geological lens that provides some clarity to our understanding of where we're going. Once you've learned about that history, you can see that it, it's truer than you could imagine that uncertainty and even tragedy at times creates opportunities for new possibilities. But all of that history, all of that, all that science is is rooted in a deep history that we all share. So you see from the string of times this incredible shared journey, this shared history that we've had together. It goes well beyond the three months that we spent in the classroom. And we find ourselves in a present moment, a present moment in a history of 4.54 billion years on this planet, a magical moment that we all get to share. And the future depends upon the decisions that we make. With the knowledge that you take from Geoscience 100 about how the Earth works and about how we have a role and can influence the future, we have an opportunity to walk that future path together to celebrate each other and to create the beautiful world that we all need.